Yo, what's up guys? So today we're gonna take a look at a move called the Vernon Stripout Edition. Now even though it's called the Vernon Edition, it wasn't actually Vernon's move originally. It was actually Audley Walsh who invented the mechanics of the move. So unfortunately, Di Vernon beat Audley Walsh to the chase and published the Vernon Edition in his $20 manuscript in 1932. It wasn't until a few years after that, in 1936, that Audley Walsh published his move in the Jinx magazine. So, you know, this sort of thing has been going on for years, it's just, it's never going to stop in the magic community. And it's toxic, so let's, let's just stop it. And there's been so many variations and different handlings uh, since then. And in fact, uh, any book that you might have lying around, there might be at least one version of this move in there. This is because the move is just so versatile, you know, there are so many things you can do with it. It's just a, it's one of those utility moves that allows you to do uh, so many different things uh, in card magic. So I'm going to teach you a, sort of a different handling and a different take on this move altogether. And it's by a guy named Larry Jennings. You may have heard of him, I don't know. The move I'm talking about, of course, is the optical add-on, and it's a different take on it, like I said, and I think you'll like it a lot. There's a lot of things you can do with it, and uh, you know what? I've talked long enough, so uh, let's get right into it. Alright, so the original Vernon Edition was a move in which you could switch out any number of cards for any number of other cards, alright? So I'm just using the, the four queens here, but these uh, really could have been shuffled by the spectator themselves. And uh, let's say we want to switch these out for, I don't know, the uh, the four aces. If you want to do that, you certainly can. And the move is, uh, like I said, very versatile and usually invisible depending on your angles and how you do it. Just for context, and uh, so you can see the differences between this move and the optical add-on by Larry Jennings, I'll briefly run through this move as well, all right? So this is the original Vernon handling, which goes like this, all right? So let's say the cards that you want to switch in are on top of the deck. In this case, I have the four aces on top of the deck uh, right there, all right? So any cards that I want to switch out are just scattered through the deck. It doesn't matter where they are. In this case, I'll use the queens again. So what I do is I just spread through the deck and updraw each queen as I come to them. Now it's important that uh, they are very much out jogged all right so more than half in this case will make the move a lot easier all right so out jog them for more than half their length and then you just go through and do that for each queen like this now what you're going to do when you get to the end like this you want to keep spreading and then get a break above those four aces like this but you don't want to flash at it, all right so it's sort of a gesturing action uh, i mean you could have shuffled the deck whatever just say something and do something and look at the spectator ask a question whatever and then actually when you do this just uh, close up the deck and get a break above those aces as you move down you have the break like that now at this point what happens is going to appear as though they just simply uh, strip the uh, queens out like this, you know, like we always do. But a uh, secret uh, thing takes place. Let me just out those again so we can get back into position. Uh, just like this. All right, so we're here. We've just spread through. We out the queens. Close up, got our break above the aces. Now what happens is you're going to grasp the deck uh, with the thumb on top and fingers below, right at the corner there, all right? So like this, so those aces are not being disturbed by that, uh, how you're holding the deck, all right? So you just grasp it like this. You can see that happening right there. Now what you do is this is exposed view. You just write those aces up uh, and align them with those out -draw cards like this, all right? So you're like this and just pinch, them, pinch all eight cards together like this between, you know, the base of your index finger and your thumb like this, all right? So you do that, align them as you move up to strip them out. And that happens in one action, all right? So you, uh, you strip them out, moving these cards with them with your hand, right? So as you strip them out, those just cause those get added on to the queens, hence the name, the add-on, all right? So at this point, it just looks like you stripped out the queens and then just put these on top of the deck like this, turn the deck over, and now those queens have become uh, the aces. Now, a quick tip on the actual removing of the outjogged cards, all right? So let me uh, let me just show you something real quick. If you uh, just try to do it like this, you know, just by their sides, it's not going to work because the cards will get hung up like this, all right? So a good technique is to do what I did and always uh, have as less friction as possible, all right? So you're not even, there is no pressure on the on the outdraw cards because you're pinching that corner right with, right here. Right? So when you pinch the outdraw cards now with your thumb and uh, the base of your index finger and just squeeze and sort of just rip them out like uh, it's like the flick of their wrist and they'll just 
they always just come out like that and it's very easy and it's very quick and there's no there's there's ever no hang up there's never any hang up All right, so for this, it's a completely different handling, all right? So, uh, this case, the aces are on top, whatever cards you want to switch in. And in this handling, the participant removes cards from a face-down deck, all right? So they can touch them themselves, or you can do it depending on the trick you're doing, all right? But in any case, uh, the first card that gets out jogged must be the fifth card down, all right? So whatever card is below uh, the cards you want to switch in, all right? So I have the aces. So when I start spreading, I want to actually out jog the fifth one myself, all right? So just like as in... Like a, like a demonstration or, you know, teaching them what to do. Say, as I uh, spread cards, just uh, touch one and we'll just outjog them like this as they go by, all right? So the first one was done by me, but then the other three can be done by other people or one person or whatever. Now you keep spreading through and people just touch cards like this and you just outjog them as they go by, all right? So four random cards has been outjogged, all right? And they really are random cards at this point. So what you're going to do is as you close up the deck, what you want to do is take your thumb here, the pad of your thumb, and you want to uh, push down on the corner of uh, the aces, all right? So you can see the four aces above that first card there. And what happens is when you push down and spread over, you can see uh, the aces as a block being pushed over uh, just about just above that first face down card right there, right? So you're right here and If you just squeeze and you push you can see that block of aces just get pushed over uh, as a, a Right above that face down card. So what you do is you close up you just get a pinky break uh, Below those uh, four aces there it happens automatically. There's no trick about it. You just push and just squeeze and push and it happens automatically All right, so as you close up just get a break below uh, those four aces now it's going to appear as though you just come over and let's strip the cards out like this and sort of tap them on the deck like this. But what happens is you add on those cards, uh, those car uh, aces above the cards, all right? So again, we're here and we just do this again for you. All right, so we are spreading through. I'll jog that first card below the aces. They touch uh, three more like this. And again, as you close up, just take your thumb, squeeze over and you'll get that break under the four aces as you do that, all right? So the break and the doing this happens all in one motion, all right? So as you close up, you get the break is exactly when you do the secret move. And the secret move is this. All right, so what you do is, since you have the break, all you're gonna do is take your thumb from the back and push up and align those aces with those out jog cards, but it's hidden uh, from your hand like this, all right? So I've just done it, but it was completely shaded from my hand and the fact that i'm tilting up like this all right so as i go to remove apparently remove those cards i just slightly tilt up and my thumb just pushes up this is a fully exposed the aces aligning them with those cards as you strip them out like this and then sort of tap them on there and what you have now is an eight card block uh, with the aces uh hidden behind those cards I'll do that one more time so you can get a sense of the flow as it happens, all right? So spread four cards, those are the aces. Uh, as a demonstration, I'll jog that first card below them. Say so just touch three more, boom, boom, boom. They touch the three more cards. Now, as you close up, get uh, push over, get your break. At the same moment as when you start to strip them out, all right? So uh, fully exposed once again, you're here. As you strip them out, your thumb just pushes those cards over and then grabs all eight cards like this, taps them on the deck and turn them face up and you still have a pinky break below all eight cards. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do the uh, the zero pushover addition, all right? So if you can call it that, all right? So you have your pinky break and to show the four cards, you say one, two, three, and four. Now, as your hands are still moving, nobody's gonna see that uh, discrepancy there, right? So if you do this, as your hands are moving, just push over that block as one card and turn everything over like this, all right? So you're, uh, you have the break and you're just doing a sort of a block pushover, grasping that block with your fingers from underneath and turning everything over like this. But in fast motion, it's completely camouflaged, all right? So you're like this, showing the cards around like this and look how hidden that is. 
So once again, here you have your break under the eight face-up cards, uh, four of which are the aces hidden behind secretly uh, the four random cards they chose, all right? So uh, you want to co constantly be moving your hands like this as you do the count, all right? So as if everything is in a blur kind of, all right? So you're like this, one, two, three. On the fourth one, it's a block pushover. You just grasp them all like this and turn everything over as a as four cards. And that is, uh, that's it. Now you don't have to uh, turn the cards face up and, and show different cards and they change the aces. I just did that for effect, all right? So it just depends on the trick that you're doing, all right? So you can keep everything face down and still have the same effect, all right? So again, everything is the same, all right? Uh, go through, uh, the four cards are out jogged. The first card obviously being the card that you chose, but nobody ever really remembers that and cares about it, all right? So again, everything is the same. So you're here. And uh, it's still hidden, even though you don't have to do this, it's still hidden by your hand when you do this, all right? So you're like this, as you strip them out, you sort of square them on top of the deck there, and they're, uh, they're changed, all right? So even though everything is face down, it looks very casual, all right? So obviously when you're doing it face down, uh, you have to worry about your angles, all right? So uh, the fi uh, coming up with the deck and doing it face up sort of hides that action, all right? So if you're gonna do everything face down, uh, you, you have to have a shade of hand, all right? So I'm left-handed, this is my left hand, but if you're, for you to be your your right hand against the audience, all right? So my left hand is toward the, towards the audience, all right? So you have the four cards chosen uh, like this, all right, so you do everything the same, all right? So everything is the same at this point, but it, at this point, you just uh, do the uh, do the add-on like this, square them up, and I've just done it, all right? So with that angle, everything is hidden, and even though they're face down, uh, they seem they just seem like four random cards that were chosen, but uh, later you can reveal that they are the aces or whatever you want to do. It's completely up to you. That's why it's so versatile, because there are as many things you can do with the move. All right, so that'll do it for today's video. Um, I really had a lot of fun uh, sort of doing a deep dive into this move, and maybe in future videos I'll do the same thing, uh, sort of doing a deep dive into other moves that are, you know, well-known throughout the literature, uh, such as this one, all right? So, yeah, until next time. All right, guys, so as always, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I hope that you learned something new, and uh, it's my pleasure to uh, make these videos for you to teach you things that you might not know. So if you got value out of it, uh, do me a huge favor and hit that like button and sub to the channel because it helps me out more than you might think. Until next time, happy practicing. I love you guys.